Well, hello, everyone. Um, I appreciate you waiting patiently uh, for others to join us. Before we uh, get stuck in, I'd like to say thank you for joining us um, for our final webinar of 2020. Um, and special thank you to all of those who have, uh, who have watched our previous webinars as well. Um, so those of you familiar with our webinars know we like to pack them with really relevant data tactics and you know, kind of outline some opportunities as well. This webinar is really no different, even though Christmas does only come once a year. Um, we think that we've captured some really interesting data points and, and insights that are relevant, relevant for kind of creatives and marketing strategies all year round, particularly going into 2021. Um, for those of you that are unfamiliar with CreativeX, um, so some of the world's you know, best loved brands use our technology to optimize their creatives for efficiency, consistency, and impact. Um, in short, we combine data and creativity uh, to, to see and, and to quantify creative decisions and strategies. Um, as always, bear with us if there are any technical issues uh, and, and just uh, I'll start with some housekeeping as well. So there is a Q&A on the side. Feel free to drop any questions in. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, there will be a feedback survey at the end. Please, uh, I really appreciate it if you uh, fill those in. It's only five questions, but it helps make this, uh, these sessions more valuable to you. Um, I've also added some, in some polls as well. So uh, a little bit of uh, participation uh, make this a little bit more interesting. Um, I think especially because we test ourselves against um, yeah, what, what is the reality. And finally, this, uh, this is being recorded and slides will be made available after. Um, well, without further ado, let's let's jump in. Um, it goes without saying that Christmas is massive. You know, for many marketers and brands where it is actually celebrated, you're planning these monumental and vital pieces of communication takes months um, of, of strategy, planning, execution, and media buying. Um, you know, and thanks to the UK retailer, John Lewis, uh, and other big brands who have adopted uh, John Lewis's formula, um, Christmas represents a, a time of brand building. But you know, it, we can't forget that it's also a, a, a crucial time for sales. Um, between 50 to 80% of total revenues are often generated in these final weeks of the year. So with huge revenue implications and you know, opportunity to demonstrate the importance of, uh, of marketing to the rest of the company, Christmas is undoubtedly a CMO priority when it does roll around. And as our favorite marketing commentator, Mark Ritson, points out, you know, there is also another C word that you know, we have to worry about. So what influence with, will coronavirus have on, on the Christmas period? And, and how, should we, how, how should a well-run brand navigate a COVID-impacted Christmas, given that there are no precedents to guide marketers towards a suitable response? So to, to th really get to grips with these uh, questions, uh, we've broken this webinar out into three parts. So the first aggregates data from the likes of Kantar, Walk, you know, IPA and, and, and system one and more to, to look at what makes an effective Christmas ad. Um, and then we used our image recognition uh, software to analyze the last three years of Christmas ads um, to see how big well-run brands have adapted their Christmas strategies uh, to meet COVID. And then finally, we've aggregated some of these insights from HBR, BBH, McKinsey and others to explore how you know, some of these Christmas uh, communication strategies might guide, guide 2021 um, and beyond. So, you know, it goes without saying that Christmas this year will be different. You know, the trifecta of consumer spend, advertising spend and national emotional sentiment have all been greatly affected by uh, coronavirus this year. So, you know, in, in community, when it comes to consumer spend, Gallup's Yuli trend analysis of, of consumer spending at Christmas does, doesn't make for the best reading. Um, so they've not yet released November data, but if we extrapolate based on current numbers and uh, 2008 when the great financial crisis happened. Um, Americans estimate of their spending on Christmas gifts looks to fall probably by about 25% or $200. Um, ad spend, uh, in total, like brands have cut 50 billion from global ad spend this year um, in the wake of COVID-19. And, and this trend has continued into Christmas. In the UK, at least to the tune of about 725 million uh, pounds, which is roughly a uh, billion dollars. Um, and this is even with, you know, the massive boosts that, that do come with Christmas advertising. And then finally, you know, a multitude of different polls of UK consumers all show that you know, they just want a normal Christmas. Um, you know, they want to feel all warm and fuzzy inside. 
the how like brands have captured that sentiment given that all the surveys point to consumers wanting ads to reassure them or to make them laugh so all of these things were really to be expected um but it hasn't really stopped brands from asking if advertising at Christmas was the right thing to do. You know, an interview with uh, Peter Cross, director of customer experience at John Lewis, um, shows that marketers and brands have had to work really hard this year to strike the right balance between selling and being helpful and thoughtful. You know, getting this balance right will undoubtedly be a massive concern in 2021, with coronavirus still at large and financial pressures increasing for more and more people. So, you know, to speak to the elephant in the room or not, you know, will ultimately be a creative decision that mar all marketers do have to get right in 2021. But then, you know, there's also the fact that many consumers don't actually want any more pandemic ads. So people want to feel good, and for many references to the pandemic, don't actually do that. You know, and this really represents another battle, another kind of balance that, that us marketers have to get right. You know, tone of voice, consistency, brand distinctiveness, and differentiation, all of these now have to be considered in tandem with, you know, ever-changing new, new occasions, new buying decisions, buying moments and new attitudes to life. You know, we've got to remember that we're in the business of making people feel good when it comes to thinking about our product or brand, you know, which is what Christmas is all about. You know, Christmas is like a compounding moment for brands and marketers that spend big, you know. Consumers are spending money, eyes are on the telly, a journalist all commentating on the ads for, for free PR as well. Yeah, this is a, a massive time of the year, but it's just also worth recognizing that it wasn't always this way. So, you know, when Adam and Eve were first appointed in, in 2009, you know, there was really no such thing as a John Lewis Christmas ad. And now it's really hard to imagine Christmas without them. But for those that may not know about John Lewis, uh, they're a brand of high end department stores operating throughout Great Britain. And now 40% of their of their annual profits comes from Christmas Christmas sales. It's a pivotal part of, of the calendar uh, and many other brands who have witnessed the success of John Lewis Christmas campaigns have really followed suit adopting similar strategies. However, none have been as successful as John Lewis. So when uh, Adam and Eve DDB were appointed to turn around declining sales, um, you know, they, they really narrowed in on a, a simple and inspired insight that the act of, gift, the, uh, the act of giving uh, is greater than the gift. Yeah, and, and then the consistency, consistent execution of this insight has led to a, a grand total of 189 creative awards. You know, data shows that creatively awarded campaigns are 12 times more efficient, and this is ultimately reflected in the results. So John Lewis's Christmas ads have led to uh, 1.2 billion in incremental sales and 411 million net profit uh, between uh, the period of 2010 to 2019. But ridiculously, um, a, a ridiculous 80% of, of consumers are able to, to recognize and correctly attribute a John Lewis um, ad to the John Lewis brand. Um, and I say ridiculous because uh, according to data in, in How Brands Grow by Byron Sharp, you know, the average ad recall and linkage is only, a, is only about 16%. So in short, like excelling at Christmas consistently uh, over time, John Lewis has managed to grow 4.4 times faster than their competition. Well, how? Um, this is our first poll. Uh, I'll just set this up real quick. If you check the poll section, it'd be great to get your feedback on, on what you think makes a, a successful Christmas ad. Let's see how people feel. So yeah, consistency, emotion, and, and storytelling really are the, the, the main drivers um, of uh, effective Christmas ads. So let's actually have a look at some of these and, and um, dig a little deeper into these creative principles. So the first principle, consistency. So for 10 years, John Lewis haven't changed, uh, you know, their insight or really the formula for delivering that insight. Small children, lovable characters, a rug ball twist, and an emotional soundtrack all are, you know, the, the bread and butter, the creative pillars that, that make up a John Lewis ad. You're know, stretching over a minute, you know, John Lewis's stories really rely on, on the characters to build tension and emotion, um, you know, before ending on that kind of product, uh, product and, and brand shop. You know, equally impressive uh, as as the success is the fact that you know this is a year long process for for John Lewis. You know, they start with four hundred ideas, 
whittling it down democratically. And, and it should be noted, they do actually spend an entire month, they've, they've blocked a month out just for arguing about music. So why is emotion important? What, is, what does it do? Well, simply put, emotional campaigns produce more business effects. Um, you know, there is a 70% increase in the number of very large business effects reported for campaigns that use emotion. Um, you know, they yield stronger long-term business effects, helping to drive 2.5 times stronger pricing effects. Yeah, volume and pricing are, are both key drivers of profitability, uh, but you know, taken equally, uh, price getting people uh, to pay more um, is uh, is one of the most effective drivers. And finally, they build brand more strongly, um, delivering 2.2.8 times stronger uh, fame effects. So reach, talkability, shareability, signaling, or cultural Im imprinting all work harder with emotional campaigns. The second principle is uh, is branding. So Coca-Cola is another kind of iconic Christmas advertiser. And like John Lewis, they've built their campaigns consistently over time. Huh? Interestingly, <clears throat> interestingly, um, they, uh, they've, they've relied not just on distinctive brand assets, but also on, on kind of Christmas specific brand assets too. Um, so the data, so in, in this case, uh, these kind of Christmas, Christmas based distinctive assets are the winking Santa, as you can see on, on screen, and also you know, the train of red trucks, which, which first aired in, in 1995. So the brand is central to the ad, um, and as such, they are recalled um, and remembered more than twice the national average at about 37% versus 16. Um, so I put here, yeah, plan, plan for eggnog. Um, so even though like more consumers are paying attention to uh, kind of adverts at Christmas time, it's uh, it's worth mentioning that 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 kind of attention is still very passive, low attention. So you know, plan accordingly um, and uh, amplify those distinctive assets. So why is why is brand important? Well, you know, we we've spoken to this before, but really high level, you know, brand consistency uh, is a uh, impacts revenue. Brand distinctiveness uh, is not only important in the long term, but it does help drive those those short term ROI uh, profit boosts. And finally, you know, uh, strong brands help you charge hard, charge prime uh, price premiums, um, you know, at, at greater volumes. So the third principle is um, is storytelling. Storytelling was a feature of about 80% of, of Christmas ads between 2015 and 2017, um, compared to the 40% average for the rest of the year. So using uh, diverse characters with complex personalities in real places, doing you know, real things with other people, are all fundamental kind of aspects of, of uh, storytelling. Um, and they really help build those kind of great attention grabbing and attention maintaining ads. And we've got data here as well. So, Orlando Wood, Chief Innovation Officer at System One, has proven kind of time over the last couple of years that right brain features, features um, which we'll actually cover a little bit later, um, all help drive uh, all you know, fundamental elements of great storytelling, help catch and maintain uh, attention more, more than ads with uh, left brain features. You know, these ads increase sale, market share, and profit gain. So to summarize, um, you know, thinking long term, uh, great insights last, and, and bringing to life uh, these, this, this, your insights, this kind of insight with a, a set of creative rules that you can use consistently over time, well, uh, it has been shown to, to grow brands faster. So amplifying brand with distinctive assets, um, and, and then kind of really amplifying that, that reach with emotional campaigns and, and storytelling is also proven to help brands grow. Well, how do you think um, brands have adapted to meet coronavirus? Have they adapted at all? Like, uh, here's a, another poll uh, I'll just set up now. Um, let me know what you think. Have brands adapted? If so, like, what, what have they focused on? Most of the people here are, are pretty certain on D. They've maintained core creative elements, so consistency, uh, emotion, and storytelling, but with, you know, a, a smaller vision of family. Uh, animations um, actually didn't increase any more. Um, remains pretty con constant uh, year over year. But um, 
let's uh, let's actually have a look. So we used our technology to find out. Um, now there are uh, quite a few marketers here who who may who, who probably use our technology day to day, um, and and some of you may be familiar with how it works. But for those that aren't, um, let me uh, kind of give you a, a brief overview of, of how we used our technology to analyze uh, you know sixty Christmas ads across 2018, 2019, and 2020. So generally speaking, when we look at a creative without technology, this is what we see. You know, In this case, we see a, a family putting a tree up in a really rather nice minimalist house. Um, so to break a creative like this down and analyze it, you know, we first kind of identified six themes that we, we thought we could objectively measure. So for Christmas ads over the last six year, three years, sorry, yeah, we bucketed these kind of creative efforts broadly into, into the themes you see on screen. And then yeah, we took each of those themes and we kind of built hypotheses around them. So in this case, you know, the theme of consistency, well, we, we thought that brands would maintain, you know, those distinctive Christmas elements. Um, but, you know, maybe kind of changing ever so slightly what that vision of, of Christmas is with regards to family. You know, so then we took those hypotheses and we built out a couple of creative rules that our image recognition software could essentially um, track and measure the frequency of. And ultimately, what this allows us to do and, and what our te technology does is kind of blend that creative and data. Um, so we, we kind of paint a picture of, uh, paint a more objective picture of what that creative is. So what did we find? Well, the first thing is that, you know, corona coronavirus does feature in ads, but um, not necessarily in, in really overt ways. It's more as context than as content, which probably bodes well given that you know consumers weren't particularly keen on seeing pandemic Christmas ads. And if people were outside, you know, they were not necessarily as, as large groups, but more distance from each other as kind of pairs or singles. Um, and, and finally, you know, a, a quarter of the ads this year mentions the year in some capacity, you know, how hard it's been or you know, it's been a tough year. Um, I mean, looking looking forwards, I think you know, there is potentially a takeaway here in, in how you think about um, using coronavirus in ads. I think there's an opportunity to, to make it the frame for the creative as opposed to the, you know, uh, making it a, a painting within a frame. Um, I think ultimately there's an opportunity there to you know, help tell more authentic stories that map to kind of some of those new occasions and behaviors. Now, interestingly, but not really totally surprising, um, brands have also focused on the stories uh, that highlight um, quality time over quality things. So the y-axis here is uh, is the percentage, the frequency of, of ads or frequency of uh, you know trees, lights, and, and ornaments which feature in ads. So ornaments in 2019 were in all of the ads that we analyzed. So yeah, as I said, you know, brands are focused on stories that highlight quality time over quality things. So the presence of presents um, has actually fallen by 55%, while other Christmas creative assets like Christmas trees, lights, and ornaments kind of remain constant in ads. Um, yeah, I think this, this is probably, uh, you know, here to stay, thinking about how, you know, you can make people as opposed to, you know, products that the centerpiece and, and really build emotional stories around around your characters. You know, family, family remains the focal point of Christmas ads. Um, you know, ki kids are all ever present, it, it seems. Um, pets uh, are a casualty, despite the fact that, you know, I think more people are adopting pets uh, this year than, than previous years. But interestingly, um, but also not, I suppose, totally surprising is that, um, Family family size has, has significantly shrunk, so no more big uh, big groups of families sharing dinner around around the table. Um, the, the the fall has been about sixty six percent. And I think you know, interestingly, if we look towards 2020, 2021, it'd be interesting to see if if this kind of trend continues. If if the Super Bowl spots will will uh, kind of center around more intimate um, stories between two and three people as opposed to like big groups of people. Um, and finally, you know, we, we also saw an increase in people hugging in ads this year. Um, slightly surprising given government restrictions around physical contact, but um, it seems that dancing uh, ultimately was deemed too high energy and, and, and too fun uh, for the mood of the nation, um, you know, falling about 60, 66% um, from 2019 to 2020. 
you know, we think these data points um, capture some of these best practices uh, that we mentioned in, in the previous uh, section, previous part, and, you know, by and large, brands have, have remained highly consistent, you know, focusing on, on family, emotion, distinctive creative assets, uh, kind of distinctive Christmas assets like trees and, and ornaments to bring uh, Christmas to life. You know, focusing on quality time of uh, quality things, I think has really allowed them to kind of tap into emotion um, quite well. And ultimately they've, they've quite, they've navigated uh, you know, the tricky balance of, of, of selling and, and kind of empathizing with consumers. So what does this all mean for 2021? Um, the, this is our, our third and final uh, uh, poll, um, our third and final section. So um, I've got some uh, data from Walk. So it'd be really interesting to see how how what how some of your creative challenges uh, uh, you know uh, map to uh, Walk's um, a survey of a, a global survey of marketing executives uh, from Walk. What what do you see some of your creative challenges moving into 2021 being? It's surprising actually brand building and, and, and sales activation is that that balance is is so high. Um not all uh, in line with you know the, the walk data. So without further ado, this is this is the walk slide. Um so according to a survey of, of a thousand plus marketers by walk, um so post-pandemic changes in 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 consumer behavior and the impact of of uh, economic recession topped the list. Um, so you know, diversity, inclusivity, and social justice is actually uh, kind of second lowest in terms of concerns, despite the, the huge importance it's been this year. Um, so building on some of these, uh, we've kind of, uh, we've mapped out what we think are kind of two, two of these challenges and, and tried to think about how we can present some, these, turn these problems into opportunities. So the first, you know, is, is really you know, planning for a recession. Um, it is obviously hard to imagine uh, a future in which the damage of 2020 doesn't come back to, to bite us and isn't, isn't paid in full. And then second is um, getting your tone of voice right. You know, matching the creative strategy to, to brand values and to consumer sentiment should provide a kind of strong foundation for consistent creatives and, and really executing um, in a way that kind of maps to those those changing consumer behaviors. Um, so the first is um, you know, that there is, the first is that, you know, there is, there is a lot of research out there when it comes to planning for a recession. I just wanted to focus on two that I thought were, um, were kind of fundamental moving forward. So first is building brand, investing in brand, and the second is the consumer. Yeah, you know, these are kind of more high level than they are tactical, but I hope equally uh, kind of motivating. So investing in brand is one of the biggest opportunities in 2021 for a number of reasons. So the first is that, is that you know, as, uh, as, as recessionary data shows, um, you know, it's one of the pow most powerful resources in terms of actually uh, leaving the recession faster. I think also second is that, you know, it's not a, a priority for many marketers right now, according to what, um, you know, 70% of brands are cutting their brand spend, which ultimately means there's an opportunity to, to really differentiate your messaging. And I think there's a there's a story from 2009 when um, a price, uh, price comparison sites were all discussing rational benefits. You know, compare the market.com um, decided to talk about the emotional benefits instead. So they created the fluid device, the Meerkat Alexander Orloff, who owned uh, the site Compare the Meerkat. So the ads they made told the story of how his site kept crashing because people were mistyping compare the market. Um, the results were like hugely impressive. So brands rose from fourth to first for awareness and consideration. Quote volumes went up by 83% and the company achieved its, its year objectives in nine weeks. So with so many people focusing on kind of you know, performance marketing or uh, essentially that kind of short-term ROIs, I think there's a really, a massive opportunity to think uh, about you know, building brand and, and, and really uh, um, differentiating yourself in, in the emotional side. So the other uh, the other opportunity is, is really focusing on what matters. Um, recessions are a fantastic opportunity to kind of gain focus and clarity. I mean, Amazon invented the Kindle during the last recession, which ultimately boosted sales 28 percent, um, outselling books that year. Um, Heinz doubled down on their D2C offering uh, earlier this year. Um, 
And by offering bundles of, of, of their staples, they managed to achieve a 200% increase in sales in Q1. Um, I think an another one, Coca-Cola have, have culled over half of their brand portfolio. So now spending more money on their core brands where more people are spending money. I think all of these really kind of, these stories highlight that brands have, have achieved success when they, they do deliver value and, and um, it will get people to, to open their wallets and purses. Um, and as shown uh, by the graph on, on screen, like uh, data from a survey from Walk, data from Walk shows that, um, you know, over more than two thirds of consumers um, have who have tried a, a brand site value as that main driver. And I think it's something like 78% uh, have actively changed the way they, they shop uh, the products they buy or the brands they buy as well. So all of these are, the, are quite high level. Um, what about uh, some of those kind of more tactical sides? Well, I think um, getting the tone of voice right is uh, is is really uh, is is that kind of more tactical side, and and, and should um, help ensure that creative efforts are well received across the board. Now, there's lots of evidence on why advertising is important during a recession, but it's less clear like what the actual right way to advertise is. And BBH have actually put together a really fantastic deck to this end, highlighting three recession traits. So I'd like to amplify that and, and kind of draw attention to two, so empathy and optimism. So both are fundamental uh, given the mood of the nation, at least over here in the UK, it's, uh, it's one of anxiety and um, kind of confidence in, in national economies is, is low in, in Europe, slightly higher in, in the US and higher still in, in, in China and India. With that in mind, let's look at empathy. So empathy, Broadly is, is defined as kind of perspective taking or identifying the emotions of others and imagining ourselves in their situation. So according to research from Reach Solutions, um, you know, this is something that the advertising industry is actually notoriously bad at. And thankfully, there's actually uh, a lot of data and, and, and tactics here to help. So again, I'll, I'll return to Orlando Wood here. His research uh, is kind of instructive. Um, so his latest research, uh, Actung, um, found that if you were to combine some of these kind of right brain features as displayed on screen with you know, the cre creative best practices uh, from you know, Facebook and, and YouTube, you're actually able to drive higher kind of higher attention um, and, and higher engagement um, uh, as well. Um, and, uh, and Professor John Quelch of, of Harvard Business School has, uh, has also said that you know, reassuring messages that, that reinforce emotional connection with the brand uh, and demonstrate empathy are really vital in, in downturns. So the second is, is optimism. Um, yeah, optimism defined as a mental attitude reflecting a belief or a hope for positive outcome in the future. And I think this ad from Zalando really illustrates that, that sentiment quite well. <laughs> Just a sweet word. Courage. The table is prepared for you. A hug is air. A hug is glue. A hug is a fire. A hug is the light. Still, I'll always be there for you. How I do. But you'll have this place to call home. A hug is letting go. A hug is just holding on. But in the end, a hug is hug. Because the best hugs are the ones we haven't had yet. We will hug again. Salander. How do you bring this kind of optimism to life? Well, I think um, tactically humor is a, is actually a pretty good option. Um, I think humor, according to data from Walk, humor has fallen from about 50% of ads down to about 30% of ads. Um, but it's actually maintained relevance in terms of what consumers actually want from ads. Um, 
there's been a rise in kind of uh, in in negative emotion ads that haven't quite cut through. Uh, so I think humor and, and optimism is a, is actually a pretty strong uh, bet. Yeah, other options include celebrating the good. So you know, good news and good stories are are well received uh, in these kind of times. And then also offering little luxuries. So you know, categories like chocolate um, reported strong growth in 2008. Uh, so I think there's a, an opportunity to think about how you can position your brand or messaging or, you know, or the partnerships you can create to kind of satisfy consumers' needs for little luxuries without breaking the bank. So to summarize, you know, compete on, on, on value, not on price, to help make saving dignified. Consumers are motivated by little luxuries and will look to save on essentials. Yeah, empathy and, and optimism are two different tones of voice that tend to map to the mood of consumers during uh, recessions. And, and finally, investing in brand looks to be one of the biggest, most profitable investments, as it will allow you to differentiate with 70% of brands kind of cutting budget, cutting budget there. So bringing this all together, um, you know, I think two of the, the three creative elements of, of effective Christmas ads are things that we can potentially help you with. You know, consistency and brand building uh, are, are the ones. Um, we're going to have to leave the storytelling to the storytelling experts. Um, but also, you know, with, with falling ad spend and, and, and a need to get more out of, of your media budgets um, and, and, and more out of creative is, is also essential given that, uh, creatives have been proven to deliver uh, you know, the largest part of an advertising advert's uh, sales lift. So digging deeper, um, I know there's there's uh, a couple of uh, uh, existing clients here today, so I'll kind of keep this top line. Um, three ways that we can help, you know, you can use our tool, uh, Brand Builder, which tracks the usage and frequency of your distinctive brand assets to grow and, and, and maintain strong and distinctive brands. You can also increase in, uh, creative uh, and brand consistency by automatically checking your creatives adopt uh, your brand guidelines and creative best practices. Yeah, and finally, you can see all of your creatives in one place. Um, and then you can see how efficiently you're actually spending precious media budget on those creatives and how those impact uh, your KPIs. Um, that about wraps it up for today. Um, thank you. I do really appreciate your time today. Um, my email is here if you have any questions.